In recent years, the study of play in human and non-human animals has experienced a renaissance with claims that it is a key process in development and evolution. Today, I will playfully hop, skip, and jump across some seemingly diverse and unrelated phenomena in examining recent work. As children, our play often involves doing things that as adults we may not view at all as that playful. Here, for example, children at Chicago's Brookfield Zoo Play Park have great fun role playing, being the vet, the keeper, and even the paper pushing director. <laughs> but the stakes may be much greater. As shown by this quotation by Dutch historian Johan Hzinga in his seminal book on the human player, he derives most of our distinctive cultural accomplishments from myth and ritual rooted in the primeval soil of play. But what is the nature of this soil? Now, play includes all kinds of activities, such as infants shaking rattles and babbling, kids building forts and sandcastles, running, wrestling, games of chance, skill and competition, joking, laughing, singing and dancing. Indeed, this very richness and diversity of play has hindered understanding. Now, most approaches to studying play begin by studying clear examples of play in the most playful species, ourselves. In this famous 1560 painting of Peter Bruegel, scholars have identified over 80 playful activities. But these activities are far too derived to enlighten us about the origins and evolution of play. We instead need to look at other species. Although all the kinds of human play listed earlier can be found in some form in other species, we typically classify animal play as locomotor rotational, object, and social. So all can be combined as when dogs play tug of war. But what exactly is play? For you see, we need to be able to recognize play in species where it is incipient, less obvious, and where we cannot carelessly use anthropomorphic criteria such as having fun. Here is a compact summary of the five criteria currently accepted as applying to all types of play without imputing a function. With this definition in hand, we can find play in many groups of animals not typically considered playful. This is something only recognized in the last several years, so let me show some evidence. I will use fish, as play in fishes was denied by ichthyologists for years and presents interesting problems. So we'll have an example here of object play in fishes, which is rare, but this cichlid fish really got into the banging around the bottom weighted thermometer. <laughs> Others of its species we tested played with it also, but each in their own distinctive way. In fact, a number of reptiles, amphibians, and fish, <laughs> a number of reptiles, amphibians, and fish have now been shown to play, in spite of being considered erroneously as slow and mentally challenged. Examples are piling up. So next I'm gonna show social play in stingrays. Stingrays are a very interesting uh, animal. And what we have shown is that they even play keep away, a game familiar to anyone who has interacted playfully with dogs. It is hard to be anthropomorphic about such strange looking animals, which is why having clear criteria for play helps. In fact, we can even find play in invertebrates. Octopus use their many arms to manipulate objects in novel ways. But surprisingly, the best available evidence we have for the adaptive function of play is in these spiders. When immature males and females engage in play courtship, males are far less likely to be killed during real courtship than non-playing males, and playing females lay larger egg places than non-playing moms. But play also has costs in time and energy, risks of injury and predation. It can be repetitive, addictive, cruel, and destructive. Young adults are particularly prone to risky play, such as skydiving. Recent research documents the many areas of the brain involved in both play and related behavior systems. Neural areas, including the hypothalamus, amygdala, limbic system, cerebellum, and cerebral cortex are all involved in different aspects of play. This has been particularly studied in lab rats, whose play is studied most frequently. Together, these studies help explain why simple and obvious proposed functions of play are rarely supported. So, a scenario for how play evolved is that it originates in instinctive behavior facilitated by boredom, parental care, and complex behavioral repertoires in animals with ample metabolic resources, later serving to maintain such behavioral systems and eventually becoming in some species a means of enhancing social, ecological, mental, and creative innovations. 
In addition, what began as play may develop into behavior we may not recognize as play. Consider these children clearly enjoying pretending to be acting like animals, but such pretense is not for children only, as shown by adult rituals involving animals, masks, and dances in many pre-monotheistic cultures. Rituals, in fact, meet most of the five play criteria and can clearly be fun. This crane dance, based on crane play, is considered the most ancient documented dance ritual known. But ritual sites involving snakes, the most common animal used in religions, go back far earlier in time. Now, the relationships among play, rituals, social learning, and religious practices are now being seriously explored. Archaeologists want to explain both ritual complexity and the fact that enormous resources were expended for ritual and religious sites in antiquity. Now, returning to Huizinga, Robert Bella has recently argued that play as an integral and integrating concept in understanding the origins of religion. To test such hypotheses, I am now involved in a project with Ralph Hood using the video archives at UTC tracing the origins and history of a recent animal-focused ritual based on an extreme type of risky play. These rituals of our southeast are dramatic, but perhaps not all that unique since snakes have been salient creatures to many species. Still, it has long been claimed that life is a game and snake handlers approach their risky play with humor as well as reverence. I suggest we all do likewise. Thank you.